Hi there, welcome to yet another ep uh, episode of QT C++ application development tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, today I am going to demonstrate the basic use of a graphics application classes um, and some of the important classes which is related to graphics, computer graphics especially. Um, I will, uh, let me uh, using using another example called matrix grid so matrix grid is nothing but uh, just a grid which actually displays a set of rows and columns uh, which will have this application will be developed will have the functionalities like zooming uh, which will demonstrate basic the basic algorithm for what, what sort of what sort of algorithms what, what sort of methods which we need to use when you, you want to uh, zoom a grid uh, 25 percent 50 percent or 100 percent so let's start by uh, with selecting a basic qt gui application type the project name as matrix grid select the project area desktop qt click test put the application in project name as matrix grid to finish application let's see what are the basic source code which is actually generated these are the default source code which is generated um, main application calls the Q matrix, matrix grid class which is actually derived from Q widget which is the main window class of the QTC++ application uh, you can see a GUI editor. Uh, you can you can directly drag under water controls which you are interested. Just try to run the application now. So the, my next aim is to put some um, menus menus for this matter split application. Since uh, I already told you, we need to have some sort of a zoom option. So if you want to put type some menu, uh, if you want to incorporate some menu, just type it and press N. Yeah, all the submenus will get automatically displayed now I need to have a 25% zoom option just type it and press enter 50% zoom option 50% zoom option just press enter 100% zoom option press enter 200% zoom option just enter so now just try to run the application now So we have the bare minimal zoom options available for you, but we didn't add any 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 code uh, code to uh, the click event. So let's uh, see how we will be able to add the uh, click event. So go to action editor, click here, then go to 25 action 25, go to the slot, go to then activated event, click OK. You can see automatically a code is automatically inserted in the .cpp file as well as the .h file. So this is the activated event. So likewise, you can you can have activated event for slot 50 percent. Then you can have event for 100 percent. Can have now the next just try to run this so we are we created the bare minimal code which has the bare minimal options with the, some sort of a skeleton methods like this now we need to add the set of code which will display the grid so I already have a red set of ready-made ready-made code which is actually developed to save the time so for that thing I just need to add some more variables for the number of rows, number of columns and other things which is already developed. So just take it from the ready made code, just place it here, uh, shift tab to align it properly. So we have the width, height, number of rows, number of columns, x offset, y offset which is normally needed to 
display a set of grids based upon the set of uh, values or the set of offset now we need to add the core event something called a virtual there is a virtual method called paint event which is actually available on Q widget so we need to put that event in place first paint event so the paint event will automatically get caught when the application repaints so that's what the importance of paint event so it's a virtual method if you, if you are overriding it it will it will automatically call the overridden uh, method if you didn't override it it will automatically call the default paint event method in the base class so just run it again so this is the paint event so now we are trying to override the paint event so we have already created just the width height now we need to initialize the width and height so what we need to do is we just create another 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 method called initialize there we need to create another method called initialize there, there we will try to initialize the width as well as the height number of rows number of columns everything of the application so this is the initialize method implementation let me let me put it in dot cpp file so this is the initialize method so if you compile it so everything is number of rows is not declared in this code so we need to declare the number hash defined uh, number of rows and columns which is actually here constant integer so this constant is actually somewhat equivalent to the hash defined hash defined macro variable so we have the x offset y offset number of rows number of columns width and height so the grid will start from 150 we start from x 100 pixel y 50 pixel so that's what the uh, say so we need to initialize it so we need to call the initialize in the constructor now uh, we need to we need to override the paint event and we need to implement the uh, code in the paint event so how what what we need to do it so in the paint event you need to call the basic method to draw the grid so this is for the basic basic algorithm to draw the grid you can you can see one class called widget that is nothing but this actually calling the base class paint event then it is passing to another class called painter which is nothing but the rendering surface where you will be able to um, and, uh, draw the line or uh, set a, a draw draw a circle or rectangle or whatever for that matter um, which is available uh, we, we on the in the uh, in the uh, in the class of methods so right now what we are trying to do is we just just drawing the trying to draw the line uh, with uh, with respect to the x offset as well as the y offset for and um, so we are actually uh, uh, trying to draw the grid number of rows as well as the number of column so that you can generate a grid just now let's try to compile it so there are you can see two two variables so q painter is actually declared in another header file which we need to specify it here which i didn't specify it now so i need to specify these two header files so i actually specified these two header files now just try to run the application so you can see the grid now in action but we didn't have the zoom options now so zoom is nothing but the scaling of uh, and, uh, row height and column um, and, uh, and uh, i mean uh, row height and column width so when we are actually using 25% um, uh, you need to reduce the row height and column width by 25 uh, by 4 so that's what exactly i'm trying here so, so, so this is what the code for zoom. So I just paste it here. So, 
look don't just try it um just try it the zoom so, so as you already know uh, zoom is nothing but reduced by uh, height and width width and height by four so just try to run the application now so so this is uh, so no other options so the repaint what actually repaint is doing is it's actually uh, when we actually set the width and height it uh, when repaint is called when uh, method is called it automatically calls this paint events so that's what excited the function of uh, repaint um, so let's say let's try to make it 50% so there is nothing but divided by 2 50% is by 2 and 100% is nothing but original width and height so I just remove this 4 and when it be 200% is into 2 so let me put it into 2 let's try to run the application now so you can see the zoom options you can see the zoom options in action now 100% 200% so so these are some of the some some of the techniques or some of the graphics classes which he actually used for zooming so one important class is the painter there is another method called paint event uh, um, again it's a virtual method uh, then you 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 can you can set the pen so I actually set the red pen uh, QT um, red pen you can you can set even the pen size also with the of the pixel size of the pen with which it needs to be done right now it actually defaults to that um, pen defa uh, defaults to default pen size so uh, that's it from this QTC tutorial, I will be back with another set of QTC tutorials in the days to come. Thanks for watching. Bye.